Happy, Happy New, New Year's! Year. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. We're gonna talk to you about our tips and tricks of living in South Korea. As you know, we've been living here for some time and we wanted to share with you some of the things we've learned from our time living here. And some of the things that we wish we would have known before yes. coming here. All right, so here we go, number one. Number one, buy a squeegee. We recommend this because the bathroom is a wet shower, a traditional Korean shower, and so this is really great for moving all the water into the drain and cleaning up the floor so you don't kill yourself. And that way your socks don't get wet as well when you go to the bathroom later. Yes, and so we're going to show you how we use our squeegee on a daily basis. One of the best things to do is use a big squeegee. You can get these at Home Plus for like 15 bucks. And this is going to get the majority of the water off the floor and the rest will dry shortly after that. So get yourself a gigantic squeegee, it will make your life a whole lot easier. Number two, paying your gas and electric bill. This is really simple and you can do it in three different ways. It was kind of a shock to us at first when we moved here, but now it's like normal. So the first way that you can pay your bill is going to be by uh, logging onto your online banking and transferring it to the account number on the bill. Yeah, second way you can do it is you can actually go to some of the convenience stores and pay them through there. Yep. And thirdly, which is really convenient, is um, at work when I receive my bill, I can go downstairs and use an international ATM and pay it that way. And all you have to do is enter in the account number, match up the name of the company, and boom, it's paid. Easy peasy done. Yep, but it's a little different. I mean, in the States, you usually go onto that company's website, you put it, you log on, you do all that. No, you just transfer it easy. They give you their account number and the bank, and you just done. Done and done. Number three, VPN access. Do you miss watching your American Netflix or maybe your Hulu? We did. So did we. I've done so much research and I've trial and error and I've tried so many that finally I found a good one that works. It's called Express VPN. And the reason why I love it so much is I can access Netflix, Hulu, and Pandora. Yes, you have to pay for it, but it's so worth it. I mean, we've been watching shows and just catching up on stuff that it's such a luxury to have that. And what's the price on that? So we are actually, we're in the middle of a trial since we just started using it, but $13.95 for one month or it's a uh, $98 for a year. So I think we're gonna go that route. Check it out. Number four. So one of the biggest things that we do here is our shopping trips are like <laughs> an adventure. Um, we always seem to buy more than we plan. More than we can carry, actually. It usually involves wine, and so it gets heavy. So our number four is backpacks. Having a good backpack in Korea is a godsend. Yes. Um, now, not only just for convenience store trips, but also if we're going to be going on hikes and whatnot, it's convenient to have a backpack. Having backpacks in Korea is, is essential because you're gonna to have to pay for plastic bags otherwise. And if you were to buy a backpack here, you're gonna be spending double the amount. At least, it's, yeah. they're pretty expensive. So make sure that you come prepared and you bring one that's durable, that's waterproof, which is preferable. So to go along with that as well, getting yourself a nice reusable bag is going to help as well because we can't get all of our food in our backpack, yeah. so we have to have a good reusable right. bag to get the rest of it in. Yeah, I like this one because it's not canvas, which can be kind of flimsy, but this one can hold a lot of stuff and it's waterproof. I mean, because during monsoon season, what you don't want to have is everything soaking wet yeah. inside. Number five, get ready for public bathrooms. Icky. Yeah, it can be a little bit strange and definitely uh, unique if you're a foreigner. So let me tell you a couple things that you need to know. The first thing about public bathrooms is um, they sometimes have urinals, and so uh, you want might just want to be prepared to squat when you go to the bathroom, but sometimes it's all you have. Uh, the second thing is it can be really strange, but some bathrooms are shared, and it's actually very common in many restaurants. Co-ed. So, yeah, so if you walk in the door, you're going to see maybe a urinal over here and a stall for a woman and a stall for a man, so you'll be doing your business next to the opposite sex. So also I was working at a hogwan for a little bit and the hogwan had, it was one bathroom, there was a stall for girls, a stall for boys, and a urinal right there. And when I would ask my kids if they needed to go to the bathroom before the class would start, they would all run in there, girls and boys, and they would all do their stuff at the same time, which in America that would be extremely taboo. taboo. 
Yeah, so just be pre prepared for that. The last thing I wanna tell you about is public transportation bathrooms. Oftentimes there might be like 20 stalls, and so just be prepared before you sit down on the toilet, you need to grab your toilet paper outside. There's usually a little area where you see women just grabbing toilet paper and then running and finding an open stall. Uh, make sure you have enough. Yeah, they actually have that in a few of the men restrooms as well, not oh, really? as many. Oh. Um, and luckily, the first one that I came in contact with that, someone had already brought a ton into my stall. Oh, you would have been. Or else I would have been in trouble. <laughs> yeah, so kind of just be on the lookout when you go because you never know what you're going to do. Number six, public transportation right here. Boom, got to get you some tea money. Expect. Yeah. Right here is a tea money card. This is something that you can buy at most of the convenience stores and you yeah. load money on here. Yeah, and they come with cool pictures, uh, cacao. So you got the, the bear that Amanda really loves. Um, now these you buy at the convenience stores. You have to use cash, you can't use your card. It's basically so pre prepaid card. Prepaid card. Um, these you can use for some taxis. Um, mostly it's for like the buses and subway. So how it works is you get on the bus and you scan, you scan that in the front. Now, when you leave the bus, you're gonna scan it as well. And if you get back on another bus or a subway uh, within about 15 minutes or so, it depends on the area, uh, yeah. you're going to get a free transfer. So it's not gonna cost anything to go back on. Mm -hmm. I've gotten across the city on just one scan, which mm -hmm. is $1.25, I believe. Um, unless you have a special card like this one. Um, this one is one that her mom got us. Um, she's Korean and she knows all the tricks of the trade. This is a student card. So it's a <laughs> it's a student price and this is only 75 cents a scan, which is amazing. Okay, I have to tell you something funny about this though. I thought my mom got me, got Eric and I a special, special Korean, Korean discount. card since I'm Korean. No, we finally, I was we were doing some research and we discovered it's a student card like Eric mentioned. And what's so funny about that is n since we've been here, we've never gotten car or anyone stopped us, but now, Eric has been getting stopped recently because they're like, you're not a student. So they've been making him pay uh, with, an, with like another credit card. Yeah, so now what I've been doing is I've been going as far away from the helpers at the subway as possible to scan my card and sometimes yeah. wait behind younger kids. This price difference is huge. This is 70 cents for the bus and it's also 80 cents for the subway where mine is a normal card and it's about 12.50. So a dollar, dollar fifty per Transfer. Where the money's so at. this one is way cheaper. So we have one regular and one student. And the other thing about this is if you don't use your prepaid card, then once you get here and you get a bank account and you get a debit card, you can always use your debit card for the bus, the subway, or taxis. But keep in mind that um, only once per month do do the fees come out of your account towards the end of the month. So at one lump sum, so you have to prepare for that. The whole withdrawal will be taken out for the entire month. But we like to do prepaid, so we kind of keep an eye on what we're spending and that kind of thing. How often we're doing transfers? Exactly. Biggest take takeaway about transportation we wanted to share with you is just remember if you're trying to go to multiple destinations to scan your card on the way out of the bus or the train station so you can really take advantage of the free transfer feature and you can have up to four free transfers per day yep. number seven y'all adapters and transformers so these are a godsend for any of your electronical stuff that is from the states or other parts of the world uh, this is just a basic adapter this is going to make it so your plug will then fit into a korean plug this does not adapt any of the voltages so for some electronics it can be dangerous this is a temporary use we recommend temporary use yes. you can charge your iphones and stuff yes. like that but anything more powerful you don't want to do it no 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 and you can actually buy these at daiso which is the dollar store here for about five dollars now this on the other hand is a transformer this has an irregular american plug and this is going to transform the korean voltage to the American. Uh, there's different transformers you can get. This one we got specifically for our American products. Now this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is you're going to be able to use your American hair dryers. Um, you'll be able to use you know your PlayStations. Don't put it on an Xbox though because the Xbox power block is a transformer in itself. So if you do that you can actually ruin your Xbox. Yes we got this at Home Plus for about $45. And we have two of them because we do have we do rely on so many of our American products that we use on a day to day. Number eight, we like to save money. Like who doesn't? So one of the ways that we try to be frugal in Korea is any pinch. Is we like to unplug our uh, hot water heater um, before we go to bed. 
Yes, and, and really any time that we're not using it because... Yeah, I'm like a Nazi, actually. Yeah, <laughs> our, our thermostat also has floor heating. Yeah. So if we have our uh, heater plugged in, it's going to be constantly heating using, the floor. Using energy. And that's, yeah. that's using energy. So Amanda always makes sure that we have that sucker unplugged so we're not, we're not getting using, paid for it. We're not using the heat. Why do we need it on? So we unplug it religiously, and we also hope to not only save energy but also so reduce our our gas and electric bills. Yes, definitely. Saving money, y'all. Yo, yo, yo. All right, guys, so this is our water heater set up. So when we're in between uses, I just unplug it, and I know that I'm not getting charged for it. Number nine, discount foods, baby. Oh yeah, all day long. So if you are like one of us and you shop at Emart or Emart Traders or Home Plus, be on the lookout for those discounts. Yeah, uh, in the evening, they're going to be doing their discounts to make sure they can get rid of as much of the stuff that's starting to go out of, uh, out of date um, as possible, and that's when you can find your best deals on meat. Well, that's when we go anyway. So we get home, we have some dinner, and then we go out, we go do our shopping, and usually during midweek, and there are discounts on produce, on meat, and you will see people like swarming to grab them. They'll be following the people you with the little clickers. I yeah, and just grabbing up behind them. Dips. It's crazy. But even this week, we found discounts on shrimp, 40% off pork chops we had last but night. Thick pork chops for like five and a half bucks, yeah, where it was normally $8. like $9. So, it was delicious. I mean, any pretty much free for all, but you can save a lot of money. And if you're going to prepare a meal the next day or you just want to freeze some, you know, meat, then go for it. It's a good deal. We also went to Emart Traders, Korean Costco without the membership. We went there and to our surprise, they had discounts all lined up for bulk meats and produce as well. So you can also find those deals at Emart Traders. Another thing I recently heard about from a friend of mine is going to be G Market. So G Market uh, is, in, is Korean, but you can also use the English translations version of the website and you can buy bulk meat and produce and they'll just ship it to deliver it to your door. Yeah, tell, tell them the story about your your friend that you work okay. with. Okay, yeah, so my friend, um, you, gotta, you gotta know your resources in Korea. So let me tell you, what he does is he buys uh, two pounds of chicken and he found a deal on G Market for like five bucks, 550. And then like every so often he has shipments come to our work and we have a full like normal size fridge and freezer at work. So he just stores them in our freezer at work. And then whenever he, you know, his wife's like, hey, bring some meat home, bring some chicken home. He just grabs a couple and takes it home, but he just otherwise stores them at work. So when he, after he told me about this meat, the frozen meat and the deal, he's like, I wish I had never told you because now he knows that my my mind's thinking, oh, I could do the same thing. Yep. So you're going to have to start putting your names on the bags in there. Yeah. No, but he has literally like 15 or 20 chickens like in there. So it's a really good deal. And I recommend G Market. Highly recommend it for discounts and convenience. Yeah. Number 10, Korean work culture. I don't talk that much about my job in general. And actually, one of the reasons, to be honest with you, is that the dean knows that I have a YouTube channel, so I have to really be careful about what I say. I want to tell you about a story about this last Friday. I'm still very much a foreigner, considered a foreigner in the office. And luckily, I get to work with a lot of international people as well as Koreans. Recently, I saw a job posting for an HR manager position, which I would love. It's my dream job, right? Recruiting faculty and getting to work with contracts. So I naturally was thinking my bells were going off, ding, 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 and my contract is gonna be expiring in about six months. So in America, we're always thinking about that next step. Okay, I wanna make sure that I'm furthering my career and building my resume, right? I saw this position, do you yes. support me? Right, so what do we do in America? We naturally go to our supervisor and say, hey, I'm interested in the position. Is it a go or is it not a go? So instead of going to the, the manager in the office who doesn't like me, I decided just to go to the vice president um, because I feel like we've developed kind of a, re a little bit of a, more of a rapport. So I went to um, the vice president and I just said, hey, let me tell you about this position, where you wear about it, just feeling him out. And then I started telling him why I thought I was the best candidate for it. Natural, right? You do this in the US all the time. But then it's starting to get really awkward. And this is why, because the position was actually a different position prior, but they had no one, no candidates applied. So they changed the title. This is, the Koreans love to do this. They changed the title to say some magical, mysterious thing, uh, but that's only going to be like one tenth A fraction of, of the position. It's actually going to be doing really something else. Servant. Because, 
since since I've witnessed a lot of the Korean culture, uh, I've really noticed that you are at the mercy of your supervisor. And so even though you might have this title, if there's, you know, if there's a hierarchy above you, you're going to be doing whatever they tell you to do. So naturally, it, I discovered really quickly it wasn't the right fit. I'm not bilingual, which is important for report writing. But then I want to tell you about the best advice I've ever received in Korea. So this VP is Korean, but he's worked with so many thousands of international people. And he told me, if you want to be in a different position we will basically come to you and he mentioned another position they asked me to take on but i wasn't interested and what they will do is if someone thinks that you're the right fit they will go to your immediate supervisor without telling you they will discuss with your immediate supervisor a decision will be made you know where you are needed the most and then for instance he would um they would talk to the vp the next person in line and the vp would then approach you so he told me that since you know, we didn't see that you would be the right fit for this. You know, we didn't approach you and that's really Korean culture. You know, you really want to make sure that you're not standing out. You're not causing waves because another thing about contracts in Korea is there is a corporate office and they may, may very well call anyone in the office that I work at and ask about me and my performance and making the decision of whether or not to extend my contract. So I learned some really valuable lessons. Number one, I need to really behave and make sure that I'm really friendly and really Keep your mouth shut shut up uh, I don't talk about my position because if I'm needed somewhere they will call me and third just really making sure that I'm staying under the radar is the biggest thing because he told me if you want to vent don't talk to other people in the office you can come talk to me and I'm really glad that you have this open line of communication with me one in the office all the Koreans talk among each other and you don't want to have a negative negative stigma attached to you especially if you want to see yourself here long term so I really thought about the feedback and it hurt a little bit it stung but then I realized it's the best advice I've ever received and it gave me a kind of a glimpse into the Korean culture even though I do work in an international environment I have to realize that I'm not in America feel like I'm entitled to any position because they will tell me if I'm the right person well guys that was our uh, 10 tips and tricks that you can use if you come to Korea that might help you out a bit. Yeah, and also if you have any comments or suggestions or anything, just drop them below. We love getting your comments and we really appreciate all the suggestions that you have. Okay, you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. Happy New Year.